because you're going to go back to coloring and get Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1 and I want you to stand for the reading of God's word. Genesis 1 and 1. Put that crayon down now. I know you done got carried away. But you're going to go back to it. Isn't it funny when you start creating, someone stops you? The moment you get into your creative mode, somebody stops you. You was excited about what you were doing. And right in the midst of your vision, of your goal, somebody say, put it away. And that, that leaves it, that's a dilemma now because ultimately, whatever life circumstance or situation presents to you, you are going to have to have the courage to make a decision. To either pick that crayon back up and start coloring. Or it's going to sit there collecting dust. All right. Now, Genesis 1 and 1, we're going to read that collectively in concert on the count of three. One, two, three. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's all I want. That's enough. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In the beginning, God created. I could have stopped there. He created the heavens and the earth. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Open up our understanding. We are in such a dilemma in society where we are being forced to think outside the box and come up with creative ideas. Things that we never thought we would have to even consider. But here we are. But you live on the inside of us. And there's nothing impossible for you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Crystallize our words in the ears of your people. That by the time they leave today. The gift will be stirred up. And they will come out of procrastination. That talent, that gift will be stirred up. And they will no longer put the crayon down. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. Now before you sit down, I want you to do me a favor. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do me a favor. Give me my crayons back. That's what we're going to preach. Give me my crayons back. You need to decree and declare that. Say, give me my crayons back. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's interesting now for various reasons we seem to forget that we are the temples of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us his spirit is in there and what happens a lot of times through life circumstances we deem him to be out there someplace where we have to reach for but if you would just dig deep on the inside, he's inside of you. That's why we constantly hear, pay attention to the still small voice. Scripture says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. He's not necessarily a saying or hollering out, Trina, <laughs> Michael. David, 
but it's a still small voice on the inside of you that sounds like you. <laughs> Sometimes it can sound like your pastor because you hear his voice all the time, but it's a still small voice. So what the enemy of your soul does is bring a lot of different voices so you cannot think. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. Uh, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. We serve a living and creative God. He's not just living, but he creates. And although he created the heavens and the earth and he created the sun, the moon and the stars and he spoke it out of his mouth and we can still see uh, his voice. Let there be light, 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 light. And from eons and generations, his voice still speaks. Let there be light. Let there be sun. Let there be vegetation. And because our God is a cycle. He constantly renews every season as the spring season that which was sown in the ground comes back up again because our God is a cycle and a cycle is a circle and that's how the enemy fights you. He fights you on something that God created. He fights you on a cycle. God is very detailed in his creations whether you're talking about the ark built by Noah or whether you're talking about uh, the tabernacle built by Moses or you're talking about Solomon's temple he is very detailed when it comes to his creation if we were to create or build if you will Solomon's temple today it will be in the trillions of dollars because most of Solomon's temple was with gold was with great gold, gold even in the glass and gold in the armor. Oh, it was an expensive and awe-inspiring place. Uh, our God, he never changes. According to Malachi 3 and 6, he says, for I am the Lord, I change not. So what does that mean? He says, my love never changes my compassion never changes my healing my protection it does not change but what does change is my creativity my methods of how I do a thing changes I change not in my character but I'm constantly creating I'm constantly opening he says in the latter days I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and the sons and daughters are going to pro prophesy uh, when he's pouring out his spirit he's pouring out his knowledge he's pouring out wisdom and we're talking about God so he's constantly creating uh, Habakkuk 2.14 says the knowledge of the glory of God shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea so it's so much wisdom so much knowledge so much creativity and the enemy of your soul will have you living in a box have you living on a block when it's a whole world out there to experience and if you're not careful you will miss out on all that life has to offer over an argument over foolishness over misunderstanding over some knucklehead boyfriend over some knucklehead girlfriend and God said I have a plethora of creativity that is laid up for you and only thing you have to do is tap on the inside of you because it's in me somebody say it's in me so we're talking about the creation of God are we ready for my slides are we ready for my slides let's get that real quick uh, uh, the creation of God check it out what it says in John 14 he says in my father's house are many mansions you may not have a mansion down here but I guarantee you you gonna be bowling and shot calling style 
styling and profiling in heaven. Check out his creativity. His creativity is so awesome that he said the streets are going to be paved with gold. Now, what type of mindset? I go out there on Nebraska and about to tear up my axle and my tire, but the streets are going to be paved with gold. That's how much he thinks about you. You are somebody. So when we start thinking about God, we discover that he's not boring. Our God is not fixated on black and white. Our God is full of creativity and he loves color. He loves color. Uh, he, he's, he's not a boring God. He's not somewhere in, in the corner trying to figure out his majesty and his splendor. He's God. Check out what Revelations 21, 19 through 20 says. I'm getting ready to go there. Are you ready? It says, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, uh, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonic, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrys chrysoprasus, the eleventh, a ginseng. The twelfth, a amethyst. Now, these are all a part of a wall that we will see on a regular basis. All of this uh, color and jewel and sapphire is gaudy. Can you imagine? So let's look at some of what it looks like. Uh, the foundations of the wall of the precious stone. We're looking at Jasper. Let's go to Jasper. This is the foundation of what a Jasper would look like. Uh, and then it says, oh, by the way, this Jasper was in the breastplates of the kings of the priest. Was Jasper stone? Can you imagine? And then it says the second is sapphire. Can you look at that? Sapphire. This is going to be a part of a wall that you are looking at on a regular basis. Maybe that's why you be looking at the jewelry and say, I need that around my neck. I need that in the house because that God lives on the inside of you. And so now you're thinking out the box and people are like, you just trying to be so much, but you don't relate to the God that's on the inside of me. I'm thinking about Jasper and Sapphire and then also the third is Chalcedony. Ch this is all a part of the wall that we're going to be just walking. We're going to be leaning up against it, having a leisurely evening, a conversation in the light of day. We're just going to be taking, you know, uh, singing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. See, all that you've been through, that, uh, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. The eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared. And then he takes us into, uh, what's our fourth one? Our fourth uh, uh, emerald look at that Beautiful. the scripture says that it's going to be almost like glass that you're going to be looking look. see see all these folk that be talking about you don't have it don't take all that you don't have to do all that baby bye you don't know what type of God I serve. The God I serve is God. The God I serve got it going on. He's classy in his thinking. He's thinking outside the box. The moment that you have a thought, he's already on another thought. 
saying you need to come up some. He says, I'm a trillionaire while you asking for a cup of coffee. He said, I got some things for you that you haven't even thought. I Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. And then we go on to the next one. And then we have Sidonic. Oh, by the way, these, I checked it out. These are expensive stones. Oh, go, go try to buy one today. Just, just, just go try to buy one. Just one of those stones can cost you thousands of dollars. Dollars, but look how he thinks about you. He said, You are chosen generation. He said, I'm gonna have this decorated in your house. No, y'all didn't get it. He said, I'm gonna have this decorated in your mansion. You're gonna have Sardarnic and Emerald and go on to the next one. Oh, by the way, uh that that meant I had to tell you that 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 sapphire that we was back at Sapphire, go back to Sapphire. Sapphire meant favor that means you gonna have favor with you 24 hours a day every time you turn here comes favor every time you walk here comes favor matter of fact you're just gonna be looking and living in favor somebody say favor looks good on me uh oh y'all not with me yet somebody say favor looks good on me I'm supposed to be dressed. I'm supposed to go to Neiman Marcus. I'm supposed to go to the best because the best is on the inside of me. Oh, I got a word for y'all. Your taste buds is about to change. Oh, Lord, y'all not with me. Your taste buds are about to change. You're getting ready to go to filet mignon. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. And then, let's go to the next one. The fifth is, we got Chalcedon, Emerald, uh-huh, Sardonic. Is that the next one? Keep going. The sixth is Sardius. This is going to be a part of the wall. Keep going, keep going, keep going. The seventh is Chrysolite. Look at the greenery. And a lot of times it comes in different colors. Some of these jewels are almost like chameleon. It'll shine one color one day, and then it can shine a different color another day. That's why some people can't figure you out, because uh, you changing every day. They can't figure you out, because the God of the universe lives on the inside of you. Oh, I was talking that way one day, huh, but I'm talking this way because my, my thought presses is, is like a computer. I'm constantly being downloaded into information and knowledge it's coming to me in my sleep up oh, I wake up in the morning I need to paint that that don't look right I need to change that up oh, I gotta change that my wife said you forever change this stuff because my thought life is changing up oh, that need to be gold that need to be purple because I'm living it he said set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth somebody show hallelujah let's keep on going with this and and then he says, eighth is burial. Look at that. Look, 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 look. That's all. See, see, this is the way God thinks. And this is the way you should be thinking. See, you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because the enemy of your soul got you thinking down here when you should be thinking up there. Come on, let's keep going. The ninth is topaz. All of this is still a part of the wall that you're going to be leaning on. That you're going to be talking. Y'all going to be sitting around chilling, having a nice cup of cocoa. You know, you're just going to be chilling. Oh, this topaz. Keep going. <clears throat> then we have chrysoprase. Wow. Chry chrysoprase. Precious. This precious stone. Keep going. And the 11th is ginseng. This is, can you imagine... Maybe I'll just do this whole wall. <laughs> now, I spent all the church's money, but maybe I'll just do the whole wall in Jensen. And can, can, you probably can't walk in the door. It had to turn into a museum. And then the last one is amethyst. Beautiful. All these colors, 
all of these and folks are talking about why you like all those colors that don't look right what do you mean it don't look you don't know who's on the inside of me it's more than white it's more get out of that black all the time just drab and dark and put you on some purple sometime and some orange you know because you are kings and queens Somebody say, uh, men say, I'm a king. God, y'all ain't saying right. Say, I'm a king. I need the women to say, I'm a, I'm a queen. See, the women say, they already in practice, baby. They like, I'm a queen, baby. You need to ask somebody. Somebody show hallelujah. <laughs> but being creative does not mean we are all, we are all good painters. Or we should be drawing. It can mean a million different things to a million different people. But whatever your creative flair is, your talent is, that's what you need to be bringing out. It can be creating beautiful PowerPoints, presentation, or dashboards, or you can be elegant poetry, writing elegant poetry, or into the fine arts. We all have the ability to create, but how are you using your creative muscle? Isn't it amazing when we in kindergarten, first and second grade and third grade, we're given these crayons, Tony, and they say, go ahead and create. And while we are in our infancy and children, we have so much creativity. But by the time fourth and fifth grade, one by one they start Pulling the crea crayons, crayons from us. But you told me to be creative. Why are you taking the very thing that I need to create? Well, here we are. We doing real good. And by the time we get to high school, you don't see crayons at all. The older you get, they're telling you that's for children. But it's through those crayons that you were able to come up with creativity. As you were coloring just a few minutes ago, look how your mind began to go. And the freedom that you had to create. Nobody was telling you how to color. Nobody was telling you what to do. I gave you a color, some crayons, and something to draw on, and, and you just, I didn't tell you what to do with none of it. I said, go for it. Go for, why is it that when we should have the freedom to do, we are forever limited? You told me to be free when I was three and four and five and now I have all these barricades in the way and I cannot be free. Thank God for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins to give us back our freedom so we can begin to create again. Because many of you in this place have stopped creating and you are caught up in the web of the matrix and you are only doing those things that you've seen opposed to reaching in and doing those things that you have never done before. Facebook is not the only thing in the world that can be created. Why are you giving Mike Zuckerberg all your, your, all your time and your creativity? You need to dig deep on the inside and say, this is what I can do, and I'm good at this. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me work this a little bit more. Our crayons are taken too soon. If being creative is such an important and valuable business skill, then why is it stripped from us so soon? Why don't employers encourage it? Just do this. And then the moment that you come up with a creative thought that's going to help the company. That's going to help the company. They're saying, don't do that. They took away and still taken away your crayons. <laughs> what creative voice is speaking to you? Some voices will take you closer towards your destiny. 
and other voices will take you further away or to a complete standstill and in this season and in this series of creativity you have to ask yourself a real question what voices am I listening to that's speaking towards my creativity or taking away my crayons what am I listening to on a daily basis sometimes it's your parents voice you can't do don't do that do something else you only as good as what I've shown you the devil is a liar whatever authority voice has been in your ear suggesting this is all you can do and this is all you can be I break that curse right now in the name of Jesus it's more in you you can do more you can be more you can create more there is more in you somebody say there's more in me say it again there's more in me Pay attention to the voices that offer advice and they are not creative themselves. They are offering you, oh, oh I, I hear the word. Uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law does he meditate day and night. I got to be around some people that are speaking towards my positivity, towards my creation and not negative, pulling my crayons out of my hand. The moment that I begin to create, the moment that I begin to think outside the box, here comes some naysayer. Here comes some gangsayer. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. That, that was the wall that was being restored in Nehemiah's day. He had to be creative because it was destroyed. And here comes Samblin and Tobiah while they in the midst of their creativity talking about what can't be done. I rebuke the spirit and voices of Samblin and Tobiah. They got to go. They got to get out of your atmosphere and you're going to have to go on a blocking thing to get all these knuckleheads out of your life. Lord, y'all ain't ready for me today. Y'all not ready because by the time we're done with this message today, you're going to be ready to go and buy up the entire block. You're going to be ready to redo the entire house because creativity is on the inside of you. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things become new. New thoughts, new creativity, new design. New goals, new vision, new. Somebody say new. Some voices are so cynical and pessimistic, they'll steal the joy out of a great moment. There you are. You just so happy about your wedding. You got your colors all created. And you know how you're going to do it. And we're going to do this and go there. And here come old uh, cynical and pessimistic Joni. Child, you don't need to do that. Why you want to wear that? Why you want to do it like that? See, you need to. Shut up! Leave my crayons alone. And let me do what's in my mind and heart to do. Lord have mercy so, I, I, I want y'all to practice that because see y'all don't know how to do it I got it down to a science say shut up, shut up. no y'all ain't ready <laughs> that was too lazy somebody say shut up, shut up. there it is mm -hmm. uh -huh. just shut up shut up shut up one of the things that will pull you from your creativity I'm going deeper is the serpent in your garden there will always be a serpent in your garden that will be speaking whatnots and smooth sayings to get you to doubt yourself and doubt your God. You got a beautiful garden of Eden and whatever perspective and you got a snake in there too. And there will always be a snake in your garden 
And so he sneaks in, sometimes in diabolical ways. He sneaks in, he, he comes in, and most times it's through people you love, people you care for, people you trust. And then they just start slowly devaluing you and taking your crayons. Just devouring, just a little bit at a time. And now two years, three years, five years later, you don't even know your own name. You don't even know if you're coming or going because some old snake done snuck up in your garden, stealing your stuff. Oh, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. Maybe that's why you don't have a creative thought because the enemy has been in your garden, stealing your joy stealing your love and you have been giving all of your good stuff away but on today you at the right place at the right time I'm speaking restoration to everything that you've lost all that creativity that you lost all that joy that you lost all that peace you have the talent but now you doubt yourself because somebody came in as a snake and they begin to speak into your ears that got into your heart and they begin to devalue you oh but you're going to be lifted up today you're going to be lifted up above the circumstances that circumvent around you and you're going to be able to see yourself clearly opposed to seeing yourself through somebody's narcissistic eyes oh somebody shall hallelujah somebody shall glory so it's God's will that we should excel. That's the purpose of creativity. He said, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. He wants you to excel. And we need to begin to take the steps of getting our crayons back. Take the steps of getting your crayons back. It may be one at a time, but take the steps and start coloring again. Start doing it over. Sometimes you got to go right back to the very thing that you thought was just done away with. And oh, never mind. I'm not trying that again. But that very thing Jesus told Peter when they was washing the nets, he said, go right back and cast your net and you're going to get a hole. I'm going to challenge somebody in this place to go right back. I heard it in the spirit today. Day. It wasn't even a part of the notes. He said, go right back and cast your net on out there. And when you do it this time, you're going to get an abundance. Abundance belong to you. You're going to have the emerald. You're going to have the diamonds. You're going to have the gems. You're going to have the gold. It's all sitting up waiting for you. But you got to have the courage to go get it. I will restore unto you the year that the canker worm and the pommel because you're going to get your crayons back. You're going to get your crayons back. Somebody say, I'm getting my crayons back. And then he said, he said, I want you to live in abundance, but check it out. John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. I was talking to the preachers on this past Wednesday. I said, I normally don't say Greek and Hebrew, but I'm going to throw in and say, I looked up the Greek. And when God, Jesus is talking about, he said, greater works. He said, I'm going to cause you to do in mass proportion. You've been thinking too small. He said, I got to take the lid off your thinking. You thinking about the block. He said, I want you to think about the world. Go ye out into the world. <laughs> Preach this great gospel. He said greater works, massive works, explosive works. I'm going to cause you to do through creativity because I'm going to cause you to think outside of the box. Somebody say greater works. Uh, uh, you're going to be in space. You're getting ready to graduate to dimensions. You're graduating. You're leaving level life. I'm going to the next level. You go ahead on. I'm going to the dimensions. 
where it's greater and massive. Is there anyone in here that's with me? Say, I'm not going to the next level. I'm going to dimension. I'm going where there's higher and greater. I'm, I, I, and see, some people, the reason why they can't do it is because they're scared of it. They don't want to be exposed to it. It don't take all that. We don't need to. But if you knew how I saw this church, I see waterfalls. I see waterfalls. I see, I see a park for the kids to play in. I already see the building that's expanded with, with our new building and our fellowship hall. I see the, the kitchen. I see the state-of-the-art kitchen. All. See, because I'm a visionary and you can't take my crayons. Uh, uh, I'm all off on the side of how we're going to fix that up and put some beautiful rock. I done already seen the next church. I'm somewhere way down the line. I can't stay here and say, just hold me me back because you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box and I've been through some stuff where the enemy tried to steal my creativity steal my talent steal my goals but the devil is a liar you're not having my talent. You're not having my anointing. You're not having my creativity. I decree and declare that who God says I am, that's who I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can have what God says I can have. I can be what God says I can be. And if God says it belongs to me, get out of my way. I'm going to be in the bitly. And you can talk about me all day long, but I'll be cruising with my gangster lane right in the Bentley, baby. Oh. Somebody say hallelujah. The way I'm seeing my life, God said, This is just a little bit. He said, I've given you, He said, I just winked at you. He I winked at you. He said, I got something else for you. He said, I, I, see, it's all based off of what you desire. If you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the, what? The desires of your heart. And if your heart is down there, then that's for you. But for me, I'm in Beverly Hills, baby. And I got green. I got shrubs. I got evergreen. I got the swimming pool. And I'm calling you all over so we can have a nice cup of iced tea and some wine. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want me today. Y'all don't want me today. This boring salvation that y'all got when we sitting in the corner. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise Jesus. We just going to sit in the corner and sing Kumbaya. Baby, bye. When Jesus was down here on earth, he was making things happen. He walking all down on water. He feeds 5,000 with two loves. You talking about creativity. Two fish and five loaves of bread. He think it way outside the box. And oh, oh thank you. He's not even worried about a storm. He go to sleep. When storms happen. Master cares thou not that we perish. Excuse me. This is how God thinks about your storm. In the name of Jesus. This is what he said. Peace be still to the wind and the waves. He said, you got so much creativity in you, you can speak to your own storm. I just said something. You got so much power in you, you can speak to your own storm. Oh, I just felt that. You got so much authority, thou shalt decree a thing, and it will be established. Uh, quit feeling sorry for yourself. The enemy is still stealing your crayons when you could be doing something spectacular. You up here worried about something you don't even have to worry about. Use your authority. I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all powers of Satan. So, so what are we going to focus? What is the creativity going to do for us? 
number one, it's going to bring us into some fun. Yes, sir. Come on, Dr. Jay. Yes, sir. I'm telling you the God, son of truth, I have never seen so many drab and depressed Christians. You can't even go to Six Flags, honey. It's just the devil over there. I thought you had the power. You can't even have a barbecue. Ooh, child. Ooh, child. What you mean? You get you some oil, walk around that block, and command everything that's not like God to leave up out of here and be going on about your business. Uh-oh. You're going to get back to having fun. The enemy is stealing your fun days. I, my, my, my thought life. See, that's why I'm so creative. I like to go to Las Vegas for the architecture or Chicago because I see these great wonders. My, my, my thoughts is in Dubai. That's where I really want to go. Y'all help me and my wife. We need to go. <laughs> we, we need to go to Dubai where it's the toe. Well, you got to look way up. See, uh, is anybody with me? Is anybody with me? See, y'all, I'm, I'm somewhere else. Uh, and folks want me to have these silly, narcissistic conversations and be bothered with nonsense. I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to take, there's a whole world out there. <sighs> and you in senseless fights while the enemy is still in your crayons. A whole... <sighs> I'll be looking at Forbes, okay? I, where, where my name gonna show up in this list? My name needs to show up in this list. Jay-Z is not the only one that can have a whole lot of money and Beyonce. No, no, that devil. I'm a chosen, I'm a child of God. I'm a king's kid. No, no, Kanye West is not the only one that can be in the billionaire's list. I should be there too. Do I have any billionaires in the house? Do I have any millionaires in the house? See, you got to start thinking up here. Let the enemy take your crayons the rest of your life. And you would have died and missed out. You would have died and missed out. Jesus said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. Oh, God, help us today. Help us. Another thing it's going to do, get your creativity back. It's a good stress reliever. One of the reasons why I go to the gym.